go, but then stop it. End show. Hello and welcome again to another screencast. My name is Kurt Knox. I'm here with Mrs. Erling as well as Mrs. Kim. This is about Chapter 5, Section 2, Probability and Heredity. And as always, you should have already read the book or be following along in the book on page 162 through 167. In this chapter, our essential question. So for your notes, you need to write down your essential question, and this is one you need to answer. What is the ro What role does probability play in heredity? Okay, this chart that you're looking at is called a Punnett square, and it shows all the possible combinations of alleles for offsprings uh, for a certain cross between uh, two organisms. Geneticists use these to predict what the child may be like, what kind of trait a child may uh, be born with, and it's kind of like a multiplication chart. You put the genotype or the alleles of one parent on top, in this case it's capital B, capital B, and you put the alleles of another parent on the side, and you just kind of bring them together so this would be a big B from the top and a little B from the side, and this child would have a big B, little B. Same here, except you, you, you want to put a capital in front, usually. And then same with here, and same with here. And so it, as it turns out, if you had two parents, one with capital B, capital B, one with lowercase b, lowercase b, all of their offsprings will have one capital B and one lowercase b. I know it's kind of hard to see this picture, but it is in your textbook, and it's the exact example of what happened here. The capital B, capital B stood for black fur, and lowercase b, lowercase b stood for white fur, and as it turns out, all of their offsprings had black fur. Okay, there are two important words that you need to know, phenotype is an organism's physical appearance. You can remember because phenotype and physical appearance both start with the pH. Genotype is an organism's genetic ma uh, makeup or allele combinations. Gene here and gene, genotype. So if we look at this picture, the phenotype for this person would be blue eyes the phenotype would be brown eyes, but then the genotype would be the letters, lowercase b, lowercase b for this person, capital B, capital B, or capital B, lowercase b for this person. Okay, describe the phenotype for your hair, eyes, and skin color. So we have two more terms that are used to describe genotypes. The first term is homozygous. A homozygous organism has two identical alleles. So if we look in the picture here, uh, an example would be to have two of the same dominant one or two of the same recessive one. A heterozygous organism is one that has two different alleles for a trait. So for this particular trait, a heterozygous organism has one dominant and one recessive trait. So take a moment, pause the video, write in your notes, explain the difference between homozygous and heterozygous. So hopefully the answer you came up with, with is that homozygous means identical traits and heterozygous means different traits. Here we have a Punnett square illustrating some offspring that are homozygous and some that are heterozygous. So here we have a flower, we have the male parts that represent a heterozygous organism. Same with the female flower, also heterozygous. Uh, there's four different possible outcomes for their offspring. The first is an offspring that is homozygous. It has two capital B's, 
or two dominant traits. The second one is a lowercase b and a capital B. This would be heterozygous. The third op outcome is a capital B and a lowercase b, which is still heterozygous. And the last outcome, here we have a white flower because it's the only outcome with two recessive genes. I guess you start with the best in the end.